So, Damon, thank you for being here. Um, just wanted to really start off with having you as the first guest. I mean, um, you supported me just from the very beginning, and, I mean, I always appreciated that. Yeah, no so, doubt. Kosh wanted to use this first episode um, to just talk about you and talk about uh, just your history, your background, and sort of uh, get some insight into what you see as far as from a coaching perspective and um, kind of what you're dealing with right now as far as being a coach during this time. So um, I guess for the people that don't know, I mean, um, where did you get started? How did you get your start? And um, just sort of talk about your background. Okay. So um, as far as sports in general, uh, I played sports, you know, since super young. I wasn't really into basketball um, probably until later in middle school. I was more focused on uh, football and baseball. And then uh, I started playing organized basketball in middle school and kind of found found my niche and found my sport. Um, going into coaching, you know, I did, didn't really know I wanted to coach until probably sometime in my sophomore, junior year in college. And I just, you know, found a, uh, found a liking for, for molding other players and, and finding an organization. So. So how'd you, how'd you get into basketball if you like didn't really start off, I guess, doing that? Like, did you, did you uh, play scores first and then you kind of like, had yeah, that? like, you know, I was just playing in the neighborhood, yeah. um, you know, I grew up in, in Hopewell, Virginia, and basketball is, is super big in that area. So we just, you know, played in the neighborhood. And then I I always played, but I never played organized until uh, later in middle school. And sure. then, you know, I really fell in love with it once I actually played real, real organized yeah. sports. For sure. And, like, um, I guess when you started playing, like, how was the – playing level, I guess, back then to, like, what you see now? Like, is it still kind of, like, things – like, how did you – like, how have you seen, I guess, how people play now versus, like, back when you were playing? You know? Yeah, so um, I don't I don't think a lot has changed as far as talent. I feel a lot has changed as far as exposure and, and social media and, and ki allowing kids to be seen more. Um, you know, when I was in middle school and high school, social media wasn't – as big as it is now. So uh, you really just knew talent through word of mouth rather than actually seeing them play. But I thought, as far as talent, I think, um, you know, it's pretty, pretty even. I grew up, you know, playing against some great talent, but you just didn't know until you stepped on the court with them. Right, right, sure. And like, I guess with that, I mean, how did you, well, first of all, how did you get into coaching? Because I mean, I know people that want to be coaches, but it's just like, you don't know how to get into the field. Yeah, like, like how do you, I guess, start off doing that? Because, I mean, yeah. like you, being able to be a coach is like, you know, some guys, I mean, would love to do that. So Yeah, for sure. Um, so I, I had a great opportunity. Uh, I want to say maybe sophomore, junior year of college. Um, and, you know, I came home from, from school for the summer, and uh, Colonia Heights varsity coach allowed me to come in and kind of chill under his wing and allowed me to, you know, assistant coach and help him coach uh, through summer league, you know, work with his kids the whole summer. And that's, that's really when I, you know, fell in love with wanting to be a coach because I real, I got a real taste of it. So from there, um, you know, that's, that was a resume builder. You know, I could throw that on my resume that I, you know, helped with the varsity program. And then once I graduated and got uh, my first teaching job, you know, it was, I just, they just had an opening, you know, I got, it was luck. You know, I was there, and and the opening was there, and I got it. And then from there, it's just you just got to do things to build your resume, even if it's not paid. Sure. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think that's, I mean, with everything, like you said, it's like, I mean, even me just starting off doing videos, the same kind of thing. It was like you just have to go out there and like do stuff for free and yeah, be seen. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Right. And so, um, at uh, Colonial Heights, do you have to be a teacher there as well, or can so, you just only coach? So um, I'm not sure how all schools are. They prefer that, that you're in the school system. Um, it's not a requirement. They just prefer it. But they do have um, a, a handful of coaches that, that don't teach in, in the school system. Um, before I was at Clinton Heights, I was at Matoka. And um, it was the same type of situation. You didn't, they preferred if you were in their school system, but it wasn't a requirement. So they would look inside of the school, and then if they didn't, find someone, then they would reach out elsewhere.
But do definitely say it for like anybody that wants to do coaching is really just that like find a coach and sort of work under them and yeah I, situation. I think it's the easiest way just building your resume um finding your niche as a coach like you know your philosophy what kind of schemes you want to run whether it's basketball or you know tennis football you know whatever it is just find find what you do well um what works for you and then you got to move forward just building your resume and what helped you like develop that I guess that like your coaching style or as far as like, you know, what type of team you want to have, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's right. like, so, so what I like to, to do as far as coaching, you know, when I coach AAU compared to when I'm coaching school ball, it's a little different because AAU I'm recruiting for my system. You know, if this, I like this kid, he'll fit my system well, et cetera. When you're in a school setting, you get what you get, you know, you get what kids are there. So you kind of have to build each year what kind of system you're going to work okay. with the talent that you have. You know, sometimes it fits the system that you want and sometimes it doesn't. For sure. You know what I mean? So. Right. You just adapt that way. Gotcha. Exactly. Yeah. And, and being adaptable, is, I, I feel like, is the most underrated part of being a coach. Because if you're going to try to run a system, yeah. if you're trying to run a full court press all game and you don't have the kids with the athletic ability to run a full court press all game, it's not going to, it's not going to work for you, you know? So yeah. you have to adapt to, to what you have. Right. Definitely. And so with the, your um, AAU experience, like what have you seen as far as like kids doing wrong as far as like the AAU process, like from what coaches they decide to go with to how they handle, you know, not being able to play. Like what do you see in, in that side of things? So, um, AU is just a slippery slope. There, there's so many AU programs. You know, growing up, um, there wasn't that many. You know, when I when I was younger, there was a handful of AU programs. Now, just in Richmond, 804 area alone, there's they on 20 programs. You know, so yeah. talent talent is split up. You know, um, I feel like if you want to be seen, as far as exposure, you want to your goal is to play college basketball. You have to play for a program that is going to expose your events that is guaranteed that you are going to play in front of college coaches or college recruits. Gotcha. Um, if you just want to play AAU as an off season and not, you know, you don't want to have an off season, basically, you just, you just want to play to stay, stay on top of your game to stay prepared for high school ball, then it's not that big of a deal. You just play local events and, you know, so it's definitely important to find a program that is going to play at specific events, exposure events during times that coaches can, college coaches can recruit because there's only certain time periods that they can come, come and see you. So finding the program and finding a coach that that works with you. You know, so, some programs are using your name, players' names to build their program rather than help the player. You know, they're benefiting themselves, but are they benefiting the player? So uh, pa parents really have to look into that as well and, and see what kind of coaches are, are being in these programs and, and their credibility. Definitely. And like, I guess what I'm trying to think about too is like when, uh, as far as like winning wins and losses, does it matter if your team is good or is it like if you just show out on this like against a certain program? Like, how does that like does that matter to coaches really? If whether uh, you're on a winning team or it's not? a hard call. So of course, you know, if you're at a at a large tournament, exposure tournament, and your team's four and zero, you know, and you're going against another four and zero team, coaches. Coaches are going to know both those teams are undefeated and they're going to come watch that because they're like, well, both teams are good. They're undefeated. Right. Um, but I'm saying if, if your team's 0-3, 0-4, and, and, and you're averaging 40 points a game, coaches are going to notice that as well. You know right. what I mean? So it's, it's a slippery slope with that as well. You just – um, that's why it's important to find, find the right program that fits you. You know, a lot, of, a lot of kids want to go play with their friends, which is cool, but right. is that the right – is that the right fit for you to get you seen? Definitely, definitely. And is there like anything, so even from like your training to coaching to the AU stuff as well, is there anything you see like when you first get a kid and like, man, this kid should 
know how to do this before he comes to play with you, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, yeah. You, I just, just there's definitely situations where I assume a kid knows, like, it's more of terminology. Okay. I'll, I'll assume that a kid knows what I'm saying. Right. Um, and then I realize once they start, like, saying, when I'm doing training, when mm-hmm. they start doing the drill and I've used some terminology and they're appearing that they don't know how to, what I'm saying, you know, yeah. like they'll, they'll act like they know what I said and then they'll do the drill. And it's like, Oh, let me break it down to them more in like layman terms right. rather than basketball terminology. So a, as a trainer myself, I've kind of veered away from basketball terminology and I like to break it down like super simplistic. And so they get the point across and I, and I try to break it down to them how they would utilize these things in a game situation because otherwise if you're not going to use them in a game situation why am I teaching it to you right and so but uh also like is there something that kids can learn before they get to like a before they get to trainers before they get to like certain programs that they should already be like on top of before they even get to you you know what I'm saying like yeah I think it's super important especially for um for older kids like you know I would say seventh grade and above. It's super important to be able to dribble with both hands and, and finish with both hands. That's something that they you know. Um, right? Yeah, yeah. They, I, I, that is a necessity to me. You know, even when I'm when I'm holding trials, if a kid can't finish with his opposite hand, yeah, it, it's hard for me to want you on my team when you're that old and you're not right. not finishing with the proper hand. Definitely, definitely. And um, what about like the younger kids, like? your middle school guys and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, my, my young kids, you know, I give them a little more leeway, you know, um, and s- some of them are just coming into basketball. You know, I, I was just coming into basketball in middle school as well, you know, so I didn't know everything. I just, you know, had athletic ability and was, you know, wanting to play. So um, I love being a middle school coach because it gives me the time to teach them proper um, fundamentals and things like that before they catch bad habits. So that's my that's my favorite part. So I give them a little leeway and and teach them what they need to know. So that's not a mistake for them when they get to JV and varsity. For sure. And so like sticking with the middle school kids, is there like um, I'm trying to ask, but like basically, is there anything that um, they could do as a young like at a young age to like help them? I set them up for college. Cause I feel like nowadays it's like, I guess with social media and things like that, it's almost like you got to start training to be elite at a young age. Like you don't get it. Time. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. It's like, so basically like, what would you, your advice be to like middle school kids that are already thinking about, okay, like I want to play this sport in college. Like, yeah. So, know. um, so there's two things about it. Like there's, there's multi-sport athletes, right. you know, that, that don't have as much time. So like their favorite sport is basketball, but they also play football and baseball. So that takes up a lot of time and takes time away from basketball. Right. Um, then there's the kids that early they're like, basketball is my sport. I'm going to play it as much as I can. They have the benefit because they're going to play basketball year round. Right. Um, but if you're a multi-sport athlete, I would just say get your shots up still, regardless if you're, if you're running through football practice every day. On a Saturday, you still need to go get shots up and dribble the ball because you would decline in your skill. Right. Um, as far as young kids, they just have to continue to work at it. They, ha- they have camps, you know, almost year-round. They have a- elite camps, you know. Yeah. Um, if, if you – and a lot of them are not invite. It's you pay money and you're allowed to go. So if that's the case, you still get great – there's great coaches there. There's great exposure there, you know, as long as you have the means or the funds to, to get to those camps, then, then that's the best way to go because you get the exposure there. Right. But you definitely say, like, as far as being a, like a young middle school kid, they can still – be a kid, but, like, just make sure that they're still, like, getting their shots up and stuff? Yeah, de- definitely. You know, I, I don't think you have to devote your life to it um, necessarily when you're a preteen or early teenager. Yeah. Um, you still have to get your shots up. You still have to put in dribble work. Definitely. But you don't have to – it's not a 
to me, it's not an everyday thing because I, I want young kids to still live their lives and enjoy everything because a lot of kids will get burnt out on a sport if they overdo it. That, especially in basketball now with like AAU and stuff like that. Yeah, I've seen lots of lots of um, talented kids in, in several sports. They do it year round from, you know, eight, seven years old. And then when they're 16, 17 years old, they don't care about the sport anymore. And it's not even a goal for them to play college. So um, you just have to find a good medium. Definitely. And have you ever like seen a kid that you've trained or coached and been like, oh yeah, this kid's going to be great. Like what separates, I guess, the average kid from, and I guess obviously like, you know, working hard and stuff like that. But is there anything you've seen that's like, okay, if kids start doing this, then they'll be successful? Yeah. So um, I won't, I won't say names. Yeah. Uh, but I, I've coached several kids and still coach kids that I'm like, yo, that's a, they're a division one talent. If they do this, if they do this, um, a, a lot of it is, is natural ability, you know, genetics and just athletic ability. Um, that's super beneficial. If you can jump out the gym, that's helpful for you. Sure. Um, if you're six foot five, there's n nobody did that for you. That's just your genetics. Um, a lot of it is the willingness to learn and take critique from coaches or, or trainers. Um, basketball IQ is, is super important, you know, um, intelligence on the court, just making the right decisions. Um, not forcing shots, you know, some kids feel like they have to score 20 points a game to, to be effective in the game. That's not ne necessary. You know, yeah. the kids, the kids that I coach will tell you that, like, I, if you get 10 assists, that's more important to me than you scoring. You could have zero points. I'm keep you in the game because you're distributing the ball and, and running the offense properly. So basketball IQ, just the willingness to learn is, is super important and can take kids from a D3 or a JUCO level to, you know, a D1 level. Yeah, definitely. I mean, because even when I'm, like, do my, you know, do my video stuff, like, sometimes the assists will be, not, like, nicer looking than oh, just, definitely. Like, constant just shots. It's like, yeah, I mean, of course, like, I'm going to find your shots, but it's like, you can make yeah. a nice assist. Like, I mean, you get, like, behind the back, you know, a little yeah. whatever. Like, that's nicer than, I feel like, than just a video. Right. Like, yeah. You know? and, and playing defense is super yeah. important. Um, it's the NBA and everything is super offensive driven. So the younger kids are like, Oh, I'm going to score as much as I can. And then just forget to play defense. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you, if you're a kid that locks up, coaches will notice that, you know? For sure. And so, um, with the underground phenoms, like how did, how did that get started up? Uh, they were a program so before Underground Phenoms, we were called Upward Stars. Okay. Um, you know, which is a larger program in, in several states, there's Upward Star program. Um, we branched off from that and, and made Underground Phenoms ourselves. Uh, so even before I was there, they had been a program together for quite some time. Then I came in, you know, and just did what I could to, to benefit the program. Uh, so we started Underground Phenoms. This is our second year as underground phenoms before then they were upward stars and things like that. Um, basically I was coaching, you know, school and I was just like, you know, I, I want to continue to coach when I'm out of season. Yeah. definitely. I just looked, you know, looked into AAU programs and, you know, just interviewed for them. And I really liked um, the way uh, Zach, his name's Zach, the guy who runs the program, um, Ways thought processes and and how he views players. You know, like I said, some coaches just want to benefit their program. He's not. He wants to benefit the players. So that was it was super important for me to find a, a program like that. So that's why I, I ride with them. For sure. Yeah, and I mean, I think yeah, I mean, I think that's important. Like in anything, it's just like, I mean, these players. You know, they they need people like y'all to like really care about them and like guide them in the right you know, the right way, you know, sure. Instead of just caring about their own situation and even trying to like level up to get somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's really important. So let's talk about, um, um, your training brand. I mean, you know, you, how, how long, um, I guess, have you been around? Right. Um, so as far as training, you know, I've been around coaching and things like that, but as far as training and, and 
building my brand. It's been a little over a year, so I'm not I'm not super deep in into it, you know. Um, but when when I started, uh, I immediately you know jumped in both feet. You know, yeah. I was just invested in myself. Um, so. Silvestro basketball training. Like as soon as I started, I got the website up immediately. Definitely. You know, um, you know, I had a few clientele at that point, so I was just recording them, um, just trying to build a buzz off recording them. And that, and that's mainly really how I get clients is word of mouth and just people seeing videos. Like, oh, you know, he's putting out videos of training every single time, etc. So. Um, you know, I've been in, I've been in about a year, a little over a year, and um, and I'm just willing to grow and willing to learn. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I would never like expected like it's only been a year. I mean, I've yeah. been around for for a while, just looking yeah. at everything you've been doing and stuff and all. The, yeah, I mean, because like even all the videos of like you training kids, it's like I would have thought you've been around for you know a couple of years doing that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. And so, like getting your first clients, like was it the same kind of like concept is like doing a couple sessions for free and then after a while you just start rolling in or it was just like you already had the people from your coaching you kind of just brought them into outside it training. was it was a it was a, a mix of both so um you know i had kids that i was coaching and their parents would be like you know do you do trainings and then initially i was like no and then i was like well dang i got people asking me do yeah. i train i, I might as well yeah. you know, I, was, right. you know I, I believe in myself i believe i'm benefiting these kids so so why not take that venture so um I, I did that and then I had some older kids not kids they're young adults that were you know collegiate players and I would um I was training them for free initially because you know they're college players just trying to get work in in the off season um and that's just how I started you know they they got me a big buzz off of them being collegiate players okay and, and me working with them so that was I just connecting with the right people, networking with the right people is really what benefited me. And so like, has it been a lot of, I guess like, and this is more asking for like other people that want to do training because I mean, I'm sure like a bunch of athletes would love to, you know, have a clientele and be able to train outside of whatever, um, like whatever else they're doing. So um, what would you say, I guess, if you were starting off, like what would be the best steps, I guess, for someone that's also trying to start as a basketball trainer, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, training. Um, and investing in yourself. Uh, a lot of people don't want to spend money, but yeah. you got to spend money to make money. Like that's just, sure. that's right. just how it is. I, I'm sure you know that you had to buy sure. a plethora of cameras, you know, different things. So investing in yourself is super important. Um, be professional as possible, yeah. you know, uh, just making a website alone it is is a really big step for people you know having having somewhere people can just click and just go through your stuff um having places to train mm -hmm. is important um the clientele will come sure. off of, off of things like that just building building your brand first is important and the clientele will come off that for sure. and, your, and your work ethic will speak for itself and as far as like drills and things like that, like how do you develop those? Like, is it, I mean, if there's like a secret behind it, you know, you don't, uh, just, yeah, you don't that, have to nothing, like you don't have to feel you, feel you. Those are stuff, but like, you know what I'm saying? How do you, I guess, develop drills and things like that? And um, even for players, it's like, how do they get better as far as watching videos? Like, is it from, you know, NBA drills and stuff, or is it kind of like looking at other trainers? Like, how do you approach that? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, if, if I don't know a client, if, I don't, if I've never seen them play, like I, I don't know them at all, I do – the first session is like very basic. Like I just need to see the bare minimum and see where their skill level is so I can adapt to my, my training sessions because each client gets their own workouts. You know, yeah. I don't do – it's not like I set up one workout and I do the same thing every single person. No, it, like each – specific workout is based on that athlete coming to me. Yeah. So, um, you know, some I've, I've been on Instagram and seen different workouts from different trainers and I'm like, oh, I like that, I'm gonna utilize that. Yeah. And, then there's, and then there's ones where I, I know the athlete really well mm -hmm. and we work on things that I know 
that they have weaknesses on. Gotcha. So I just build it around their weaknesses. Definitely. And then, like, what do you suggest to players as far as um, getting better? Studying uh, and stuff, yeah. Yeah, so um, I don't – I wouldn't recommend studying – NBA players, I would I would more recommend studying college players because they're more organized, more um, – it's less free freedom yeah. in, in college basketball. You know, a lot of them are still running a system and yeah. still being coached, like, through the whole game where the NBA has a little more freedom to, to do their thing. Right, right. Um, and I would if – they, if they have film, I would study – study film, not even study highlights, study the whole game, like what went well, what didn't go well, what, what they can do. That's why I think film study is, is super important. Like even at the middle school level, yeah. we take like 45 minutes to an hour after, um, after games the next day at practice and we study the, the game from before and I break down film for them. So just seeing what you did well and what you didn't do well. And do you feel like kids are doing enough like outside of structured stuff with you or do you feel like right now you know kids aren't really especially like so we'll go ahead and segue into like right now it's like do you feel like kids are doing stuff right now to like the quarantine yeah the quarantine okay. everything like do you feel like they're like keeping up with stuff on their own versus like having to have a structured session with you you know what i'm saying like yeah um very hit or miss i think it depends the kids determination um yeah. And, and their will to be successful. There's there's definitely some talented kids that are just talented off their gifts just naturally, and, and they don't feel like they have to work as hard, which is sometimes works for them, and sometimes that backfires. And then there's some kids that still get working every day. So um, I, I would say it's 50-50 right now. Yeah. Uh, some kids are, are still putting in work and some kids are just taking advantage of their being in quarantine and just chilling at the crib. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've, I think that's going to be the biggest thing with this whole quarantine because even um, with football, you know, they might not have a season. They're still yeah. trying to decide that. So it's like, I think this time is just really, and then even with like um, basketball camps getting canceled and stuff, it's like, we're about to see, you know, some shifts as far as, who's the best and kind of closing the gaps between people. Cause it's like, yeah. you know, some people are online on Xbox right now while others are outside trying to get better. So it's kind of yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it's like the in between. So um, is there anything that's kind of been uh, affecting you, I guess, with this whole quarantine thing and like, you want to share your advice for other people? Um, man, the quarantine is, has yeah. been trying as far as, you know, when it initially happened, you know, I'm a teacher as well, so we get we got sent home from school. Yeah. Um, then with trainings, you know, gyms closed. Yep. So I, I didn't do a training for months, you know, um, just because of the possibility of, you know, COVID-19. So I tried to limit my exposure to, to people in general initially. Yeah. Um, and then... After a while, once we got into phase two and phase three, I started doing workouts again. But I'm still – we're working out outside. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not in the gym right now. Some gyms have opened. Um, just the gyms that, that I work out at um, are not open right now. So we're doing, we're doing outside workouts. Um, as far as people continuing to work and continuing to train, yeah. um, continue, continue to train, whether it's outside or inside – getting up a shot inside or outside does not matter because you're still getting up shots. Yeah. It's going to be more effective than somebody sitting on the couch. Definitely. Definitely. And then um, I guess your advice to parents, like, is there anything that parents are doing that are like, like that get in your way? Like sometimes like, do you have those parents that are kind of, Hey, maybe do this instead of that. Like you're, you know, that kind of yeah. stuff. I, I've been pretty blessed with, I definitely, I've seen as, as far as an assistant coach, yeah. um, you know, cause I'm an assistant coach at, at the JV and varsity level at Colonial Heights. Okay. Um, I've witnessed situations, you know, where they're not necessarily saying anything to coaches, but you can hear them in the stands, of course. Right. Um, I've been blessed at, you know, the AU or middle school level where I haven't really run into a, a parent that's over 
overly boisterous. Right. Um, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and that's just luck, you know. That's not not me doing anything. I'm not the perfect coach. It's just I have parents that that believe in what what I believe in, and they think I'm doing doing the right thing with their kids. And yes. if they don't if they don't think I am, then yeah. they move on from me. You know that, but they don't. I don't have parents that are like, oh, you should run this set. Oh, you should tell blah blah blah. They need to do blah blah blah. So I've just I've just been super lucky with that. And is there anything that like parents do that they like is there anything the parents do that maybe might hurt their kid like not even from a situation that, that you know of but like just in general like is in there general, anything, yeah um I, th I think putting in your uh child's head that they deserve everything or or yeah. they are the star yeah. you know um there's there's five people on the court of 99 percent of the time there is at least one better player than everybody on the court. But if that player doesn't realize that, or if that player doesn't even care that they are the best player on the court, that been, that's beneficial for the team. Yeah. Because they're not going to feel like, oh, I need to put up 30 shots. They're going to, you know, have faith in their teammates. When there's a double team comes on them, they're going to pass to the open person. So I just think parents just keep keeping your, your – kids humble, um, your players humble, um, keeping them hungry for, for success and, and wanting, striving for, for excellence and wanting to be better players and better humans. Um, and, and as a parent, you know, that's, that's all you, that's really all parents strive for anyways, is, is trying to, you know, make their, their youngins better people in general. So. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, cause I see that, I mean, and I'm sure you do too. Like you see that all the time with, like college athletes feeling like, you know, they're the man, even at like the five-star level, it's like, you know, you were five stars at your high school and stuff. And you go into a program with a bunch of other five stars. It's like, you know, you got to remember like, and now you're not eating enough. Yeah. So yeah. It's like, and I mean, even NFL level, you see that. I mean, any, yeah, any level sure. you see that. so I think that is important for parents. So. I, th I, th I think it's a big adjustment for, for certain, not always, not all, not all kids, but just certain, certain, egos it, it triggers and um I think that's a big part of some five stars going to less prestigious programs now so they're the only five star and they're gonna get a bulk of the shots I think I think we'll start seeing that more often too because they're still gonna go to the NBA you know yeah and they're they're just gonna eat the whole time they're one year at college because they're gonna get 30 shots a game because they're playing with a bunch of three stars for sure is there any like any other trends that you're kind of seeing right now in like basketball that either kids need to be aware of or start thinking about or parents or anybody that like, anything you're seeing right now? Um, I, negatively, um, just kids kids doing too much as far as they just want they want highlight films, you know, um, and, and even like. <laughs> For example, when you come and record my games, right? My kids, I don't tell my kids until you pull up on us, right? That's, that's uh, smart. That's smart. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, but they see you, you know, they see you when you come in. So they're like, oh, coach, coach got the cameraman here. So <laughs> they may do too much, but I make it a point before the game that you will sit on the bench if, if you're not playing the game that I know you play. You know, if I see you doing too much. And, and I think a lot of kids, that's not the case for everybody. So they'll do too much. It's just a, is it too much Instagram and yep. all that highlight films yeah. makes kids do too much. And I'm, and I'm a very bare minimum. Like you get a bucket. I don't care how you got the bucket. It, it counts the same. No, for so, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, cause I, cause I definitely agree. Like, you know, I guess I'm part of the problem, but I understand like what you mean. Like, because I can see it too sometimes, like when I'm on the, you know, Everybody else is yelling like, "Hey, man, pass the ball!" And he's, you know, not passing the ball because I'm yeah, trying to eat. Or, yeah, yeah, and, and you know, certain times it's like, uh, that's a bad shot. You yeah, know? So, no, I'm sure, I'm sure you see it plenty, but I mean, you're very necessary. You know, to great quality film is it, important nowadays. You know, so um, kids just gotta. If you're a good player, you're gonna shine regardless. So you don't have to do anything extra than what you do and you're gonna you're gonna shine for sure and like 
I know uh, you recently um, um, just got a camera and everything. So what, right. what made you decide to go out and uh, get that camera? Uh, so the camera um, quarantine was, yeah. had me just plotting, you know, yeah. so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to put my hands in a bunch of places. Cool. So um, I'm dabbling in, in YouTube right now. That was the main focus of, of getting it um, in the YouTube. Of course, we'll be tied into the, Silvestro, the SBT yeah. um, program, but it's mainly going to be me just going around, um, you know, and hooping in different neighborhoods and different areas so, um, in Virginia, North Carolina, DC, Maryland area. Um, it's a little more difficult because a lot of gyms are still closed right now. So yeah. the content won't be coming out as much, but once things open up, that'll be it. And it, it's going to be beneficial in a sense of, on my day-to-day -day filming of games, you know, I was filming on a suckier camera. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when I do game films, they'll be, it'll be more crisp. Yeah. Um, and I use it occasionally when I'm doing training, but I still mainly use my phone on training. But like, if I have somebody, like if I was training a college player or, yeah. or a semi-pro or a pro basketball player, I would use like the legit camera to, and do as much as I can. And you've and you've been super helpful with that too, so I appreciate that. I appreciate you, yeah. I mean, for real. I mean, I, you know, I'm glad I was able to help. And um, even even that uh, that first video that you did, that was sweet. Like that was like the the music. It, it was like a like a um a custom song, wasn't it? Like yeah, a song made just for you. So that was cool. I was like, oh yeah, this is tough. Like yeah, yeah my my guy hooked me yeah, up with that. So <laughs> yeah, man. Um. Yeah, I mean, so going back, I guess, to your training um, program and everything, like, what's what's coming up as far as, you know, future plans for it? Like, what do you have um, coming up for it? Yeah, so um, last summer, um, you know, there wasn't a quarantine, so we had a three-on-three -three basketball tournament, you know, sponsored by me. Um, I want to do that again uh, when things clear up and sure. and kids can, can come out. Um, also want to hold a camp. This is all coming off of COVID-19. So, so timing is a little odd right now, but, but these are all plans that are going to come when, when they're cleared to, to happen. Yeah. So camp, a three on three tournament, uh, continue to grind and, and train kids and get them better. Cause that's, that's the main focus. You know, that's what I care about, care about the most is, is making kids better um and that's kids from all over you know a lot of people think i'm just training clean ice kids that's not the case i will i will train a kid that i got to play the next day and i and i've done that plenty that's you know great. what i mean <laughs> so I, i've trained a kid from dinwiddie once on a sunday and then i had to play him on a tuesday and i would i would do that as much as i can i don't it doesn't bother me i have just want to be better have you ever like you know like seeing that kid do stuff and you're like oh man like oh man did the move like <laughs> so if he watches this he'll know who i'm talking about but <laughs> so we i trained him on a sunday then we we literally played him on a tuesday and he, he put like 26 points on us Jeez. <laughs> and, I, and i was like of course i'm upset because right. he put 26 points on us but then i'm like well i helped him put 26 points up you know yeah. so so it, it was cool but um yeah so SBT, I'm gonna to continue to push merchandise. You know, I got more merchandise coming. Um, Definitely give me more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're gonna put in new orders, um, and then um, continue to grind with the with the training. That's cool, cool. And so you, um, you recently had a son. I mean, a, a few months ago now, right? Uh, yeah, he's um, he just turned eight months. Okay. Oh, okay. He, he came. He came right right before basketball season. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. How's that, how's that whole experience been? This is your first one? Yeah, this is my first one. Um, crazy, you know? It's a big big life change. You used to, yeah. to kind of go coming and going as you as you went, and that's not the case no more. You, yeah. got, a, <laughs> you got a little one on your side now. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's, it's just been a weird time with um, quarantine, yeah. you know, having a baby. That's why I kind of separated myself from people for a while, too. So. Sure. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. Less than no. Cause yeah, I mean, cause I'm I'm in that like area, cause um, I'm actually uh, uh, engaged right now. Okay. Uh, I've been with my fiance for like this will be 
it's seven years now. So, you know, we're kind of in that space. Yeah, you're in there, for sure. Yeah, so I was kind of like, man, like, you know, having this son especially, man, like, that's that's cool. So, yeah. Are you already, um, uh, like, have him lean towards basketball right now? Are you kind of oh, like, my gosh, like, yes. <laughs> no, I, I'm going to – I'm going to support him whatever he chooses to do, yeah. but um, he would definitely be at basketball practices, and, you know, hopefully it will just naturally have him drawn to the sport. For sure, yeah. That would be, that'd be sweet. That'd yeah, be sweet. for sure. But yeah, I mean, um, is there anything that you feel like you want to you know, tell people or just anything that we haven't covered or anything that you want to just let people know? I think we covered everything. I'm just – I just want to tell the – um. The kids that are still, you know, middle school, elementary, high school, continue to work. You know, we're in a quarantine, but continue to work. For sure. You no, know, don't take – if you're in your off season, act like it ain't off season. For sure. And um, so, I guess, uh, just closing, man, um, where can people find out more about you, you know, get your merchandise, anything like that uh, from you? Yeah, so um, I got a website, SilvestroBasketballTraining.com. Um, Silvestro is S-I-L-V-E-S-T-R-O. And then um, IG is Silvestro underscore basketball underscore training. And that's the two main, you know, platforms I'll be on. Um, and you can get to my YouTube page and my Twitter and everything through Instagram. So Instagram is my, my main go-to. Cool, cool. Well, hey, look, I appreciate you for talking to me. Um, you know, I, you've dropped all kinds of knowledge on people, so I appreciate it. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. And uh, I just want to thank you again for everything.